Hi, this is Night Owl Fibers, a knitting podcast. My name is Rachel. My name is Brenda. This is episode 43. Um, there will be show notes down below with information about what we have been working on and talking about throughout this episode. There may or may not be links to patterns, um, uh. depending on how ambitious I feel. But if you put it into Google, you can find um, the, the source, information. the information, and, and be able yeah. to find it yourself. So, yeah. welcome back, and welcome especially to all new subscribers. We've had a bump yes. in subscribers, and we are just tickled pink and so thrilled to have you join us. So, it means a lot to us. It really does. Um, when we hit 500 subscribers, we are going to have a big mm -hmm. giveaway, so spread the news. And if you like what you see here and you're not subscribed, please subscribe means a lot to us. Yes. Hit the bell um, and turn on your notifications so you are notified mm -hmm. of every new episode we do. We try to do it every two weeks. So, thank you. Yeah. And um, we are coming to you from Houston, Texas. Yeah. And our winter consists of some fog and rain and a little bit of overcast skies. Pretty mild, but... Yeah, it can yeah. get you kind of feeling mopey and kind of down sometimes with all the gray skies. Um, yeah. I know I certainly wouldn't do well living up north like I used to uh, with the dry, the gray skies. Yeah. I need sunshine. I really do. Mm -hmm. um, We've had a couple blue skies within the past week, which have. has been really nice. Yeah. Um, really settling in. That's good. Yeah. Okay. So, so. welcome. Yep, and I think that's it for our intro. Grab your knitting and let the crafting begin. Okay, so this is Stitch by Stitch, where we show everything that we've been crafting on lately. Um, everything that's gotten a little bit of work. And I have, I think, three projects for... I have three projects. Okay. Do you want to go first? You go first. Sounds good to me. I'll just continue working on mine. Okay. So I have cast on a pair of socks. This is the Hagrid Colorway by Night Owl Fibers, so I dyed it. It is um, available now through the 15th of February. And so this is a seven striper. We have a light gray, a yellow, burgundy, olive green, tan, pink because of Hagrid's umbrella, and dark brown. So get yeah, the little pop. Isn't that adorable? It even has this little dirty pink yeah, umbrella. Yeah, kind of like a mauve yeah. pink. So cute. Um, right there. So for this pair of socks, I decided to use a US 1 2.25 millimeter. And I did 56 stitches like I normally do. It's just a plain vanilla sock, and I'm almost to my heel marker. I do an afterthought heel. And I like the tutorial from Kirby Worby. That's um, a great tutorial. For Afterthought. And if you look that up yeah. on YouTube, you'll find it. Um, let's see. Doggy medicine alarm went off. I'll just um, silence it for now. Yeah, so I think yeah. that's all I have to say about the socks. I'm really enjoying them so far. And... Yeah, see. so if your Valentine doesn't get you what you want for Valentine's Day or you are your own Valentine, yep. uh, you can order a skein of Hagrid. Treat yourself. I like being my own Valentine. Yeah. It's nice to pick something out and treat yourself. It is. It is. Okay. Okay, so I guess I will start with my first work in progress, uh, or my first stitch by stitch. It is also a sock. I am knitting this out of opal and it is deep deep stash. I think I've had this one for four or five years. Okay. Um, ooh, drop, drop I just dropped stitch. a stitch. No biggie. I got it. Oh, it's good. Um, this is a Hunter Vosser uh, colorway. Let me open my knitting journal to give you the exact number. Number 2101. It's based on a painting. I don't know if you can see it. Um, it's all caked up and I have it in my Nerdy Llama yarn hugger. Let me get to the end of the row and I will show you what it looks like. Okay. I have it on my Knit Prider, Knitter's Pride Zing US 1 2.25 millimeter. I love these needles. I like a good stiff cable. 
I do my socks top down because that just fits better for me. I do a heel flap where I slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one. Mm -hmm. And I do a heart shaped heel turn. Um, I've worked my gussets and now I'm working down the foot where I will do a probably a rounded toe most likely the umbrella toe by K.F. Jones from the Bakery Bears. So yeah, this is my first pair of socks for the year. And using Deep Stash, which I completely am in love with. I've wanted I to love. see that one knit up for a long time. Yeah, and it's beautiful. It's, it's been in my stash for a very long time. So I think what I'm going to do is I have a granny stripe blanket that I used all of um, my mini skeins from my advent calendar when Opal did an advent calendar mm -hmm. and leftovers from socks and I think whatever I have left over I'm just going to use either in a bits and bob blanket or another granny stripe crochet blanket because I just that would I be love really them. pretty but it would be pretty in a bits and bob also with a white neutral it would yeah to make the other colors stand out Definitely. which would be something different to do which would be fun yeah yeah Okay, so what else is on your needles, Rachel? Okay, so I am knitting The Weekender by Andrew Mallory. The Weekender? Nope, The Throwback. <laughs> I, I got mixed up there. It's The Whoops. Throwback. It is a worsted weight sweater, and I am almost to the end of a row. I am using Knit Picks, Wool of the Andes, for three of the colors and then one of the other colors in here is a Patton's Classic Wool Worsted. And it's, um, the color works is all leftovers. Yeah, which is great. I mean, there's still a ton of leftovers, but mm -hmm. it was nice to incorporate a little bit of what I had. So I will show it to you now. It's showing up really pretty. Yeah, so the top color here and the color work a light gray is the patents and I don't remember what the color was called the gold is brass heather and then the orange color Rust. rusty color is rubious heather and the brown for the main body is briar heather mm -hmm. okay got it right yeah. this time because I had ordered it for a weekender for myself and I decided mm -hmm. not to knit another weekender and I gave it to yeah. you so here's the color work floats on the inside, and I have a progress keeper. It is which right is about where here. you were last time. This is where I was last time, um, and I knit to the point where I was ready to bind off according to the pattern, and uh, I tried it on, and it did not look right on me. Because you have it, a long torso. I do. Short it, legs and a long torso. Mm -hmm. It looks beautiful on other people with that I've seen that have knit the same, the right length, the pattern length, mm -hmm. but for me it just wasn't going to work. So I picked up my stitches and then I frogged back to where it was, so I ripped out four inches of ribbing. And now Yikes. I'm working on stocking knit again and getting to a length that I want. I'll have to order more yarn to complete it with the extra length that I'm adding in, but that's okay. I'd rather have it more wearable and look right for my body than, you know, finish it and then never wear it, because that would be a shame. And Knit Picks is having a big sale right now for all of yeah. you who shop Knit Picks. Mm -hmm. You know, the Wool of the Indies is a good, affordable yarn. It pills minimally. Mm -hmm. um, it wears really it well. It wears really well. It does soften the more you wear it. Mm -hmm. It's on the slightly scratchier side, so if you're used to cashmere or an MCN yeah, or, or silk or some of those other things, you may not enjoy this. But I think it's next to skin soft. I would call it like BFL sock yarn, kind of like that. Yeah, that's a good comparison. You can feel it's sturdy, but it's mm -hmm. not scratchy in my book, like yes. what I consider scratchy. Yes, I agree. Um. Yeah, so I did have to go down needle size to get pattern gauge, but... And do you always gauge swatch? I always do a... I cast on the number of stitches and I knit at least two inches in height, and then I check. 
Um, so you don't necessarily go to the four inches? No. If it's a yarn I have used before, and I know how much it's going to grow, and I know the characteristics of it. Mm -hmm. Like, I've used Rule of the Indies a lot, and I know how it wears, I know how much it generally grows. Okay. So I was comfortable with just knitting a little bit of a swatch, but not, like, the full amount, mm -hmm. and not fully washing it and measuring right. it. And right. Now, just because you've worked with the yarn before doesn't mean that it's going to grow the same amount, because if you're knitting at a tighter gauge, it's going to hold its shape better than a looser um, gauge. So it's always good to do a full gauge swatch. And I do think that over time mm -hmm. our knitting gauge changes. Yeah. I know for me when I'm stressed, I knit much tighter. Yeah. When I'm more relaxed and life is when life is going well. easier, I'm a, a looser knitter. And my mm -hmm. gauge and tension is just generally a little bit looser. So I do think that it's always good to yeah. one, know the, the yarn you're working with and what you're typically doing, but also to, you know, swatch. Yeah. Okay, ready for me to go yeah, next? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I am you, uh, working on the Easy Goes It by Finicky Creations. Uh, the, 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 the. <laughs> it's okay. late. It is past 8 o'clock and my mouth does not want to work anymore. Um, the designer is Michelle Higgins. Here's a picture. And I am using Rachel's color of the year, which is Deep Sea Oasis, and it is this beautiful um, teal blue that goes into a lighter teal and then into a soft blue. It is on her Tawny Owl Base, which is 100% Superwash Merino. It is so squishy and so soft. That's looking really um, nice. This is where I was last time. So I have done quite a bit. This little progress keeper here is just to help me count my um, repeats because the edge is done so brilliantly. Um, you can count your repeats by um, the edging. I have a little, I don't know if you can tell, there's a little panel of stocking knit, a garter row, stocking knit, garter row, and I'm back to just garter and then it will go into lace so it changes frequently it was a free pattern one skein uh, of sock yarn mm -hmm. so it's a great way to use up that single skein in your stash um, I don't know if I'll get it done in time for yellow rose on the coast and if not I'll be working on it in the booth and you can come by yeah. and say hi and see what it looks like and squish it and feel it the nice thing though knitting there's no deadline like you can work on it at your pace and, and I have really that has been one of my goals this year is I put pressure on myself to have it done for the podcast have something mm -hmm. to talk about you know meet meet this sometimes unrealistic goal and um, I just really want to be kind to myself this year and enjoy the process okay. not just the product but the whole process and this year shawls not really doing it for me. I was going to cast on that color affection in those beautiful purples and I put them back up in my stash because I just decided I'm not feeling it. I don't want to cake it up and then have it sit there and feel that pressure to knit on it. So I just decided one shawl is enough for right now and I'll enjoy what I'm working on. Yeah. So. Okay. What else you got? I have... Oh, I should mention that the shawl is being knit on a... I've got it here in my book. A US 6, a 4 millimeter. Okay. So, I have a big giant sock tube. <laughs> so, I was... Ginormous. Luckily lucky enough to know somebody from Instagram that has a sock knitting machine. Hi Drew! Hi Drew! I She's so don't sweet. know if you watch but if you do thank you so much for cranking these. So I did a little trade with her. I sent her some yarn and she cranked these for me. So this colorway really pretty. is Harold's Purple Crayon which is inspired by the book 
That is a classic book. Yeah. I love that book. And so I had a little blue mini left over that went really well with this blue stripe in here. Mm -hmm. And I just decided to do that. So I have a toe done. And I'm excited to get to turn it into socks. Socks. And I think I'll be able to get full length and shorty socks out of it. Oh, that's fantastic. I got the whole 100 grams cranked. This, what I am showing you right now, is Snow White and her seven dwarves. So there are seven stripes for the dwarves, black for Snow White's hair, mini stripes in Snow White's outfit, the dress she wears, and then another black stripe. So I'm excited again to see this turned into socks. Um, not sure what mini I'll use. I have green, but I don't know if it's enough. So I might use a brown. I might dye up this mini. Um, if I didn't say this is night all fiber yarn. And it's um, available online. It is, yeah. So you could make the shorty socks for me because I need to add to my shorty socks. I could. That would be great. I'll but let that's you try 60 on, count. I'll let you try on. And I usually do 64 the, count. I'll let you try <laughs> on. I'm going to keep interrupting you. Sure. Um, <laughs> when I finish the first full length sock, I'll let you try it on and see if 60 stitch count being cranked works for you or not. If so, then I can knit you shorty socks or you could turn it into shorty socks if you want to try the process. I'm sorry. She always gets interrupted here at the house by her yeah. dad and sister, and I'm sorry. Uh, ah. Okay, before I start this next row, I'll show you my next work in progress. So I have really been feeling sweater knitting lately, and I sat down with all of my sweater quantities, and I put all the patterns that I plan on knitting with the sweater quantity so that when I'm ready to knit a sweater, it's ready to go. And I cast on the Mycroft sweater because when little Minky, who is Grace uh, from the Modern Scheme, test knit this for Isabel Kramer, I fell in love with it and thought I need one of those in my life. I'll show you a picture. Mm -hmm. It is this beautiful sweater that has broken rib at the top of the neck um, and at the bottom. Um, beautiful. I am using Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Superwash in um, Fjord Heather. And here is my gauge swatch. Mm -hmm. uh, I washed it, blocked it, and I'm pretty much right on gauge. And I know that as I wear this, it will grow mm -hmm. um, just from the weight of it and I don't plan on washing it a lot, but I just know when you wear it, it's, it, it stretches out and mm -hmm. grows. So I'm knitting the large 44 inch bust. Um, it's said to have three to four inches of positive ease. I don't want that much positive ease. I like it to fit comfortably. A not, lot like the one you're wearing. A lot like the one I'm wearing, which we'll get to in the next segment. Mm -hmm. um, so that is what I cast, and I started it last night, I cast on. Rachel was busy dyeing yarn and mm -hmm. I had a break so I thought I'm going to cast on. And it has, okay, here's the front and here's your back and the back has short row shaping. I'm doing a horrible job of showing this because it's just so tiny right now. It'll um, get bigger. And I did all the, the German short rows correctly. I was getting the broken rib done correctly. I was so proud of myself. I joined in the round, or it was already joined in the round, but then I started working all the way around instead of doing the front, the short, the short rows. rows. And I got the first repeat done, and I got the second repeat done, and I set it down. And Rachel got done dying, and she came in and I said, look at what I did, I'm so proud of myself. And yeah. she got to studying the work, and she goes, I think you have a mistake. And I'm like, oh, rats. So I had to tink back one row, and luckily I didn't have to rip back or rip out the whole thing and frog the whole yeah. thing because Rachel was able to drop down in the little section that I had done incorrectly and fix it for me. So thank you very, very You're much. Welcome. I am so blessed to have a daughter who is so talented that can do that for me because... I'm not that talented of a knitter yet. I'm going to but get there. You're growing step by step. I'm growing. Um, I'm 
pushing my boundaries and I'm mm -hmm. pushing myself and um, yeah so that is what this will be and I am really one of those people that like to write down um, my rows and uh, make really good notes and um, that way if I want to knit it again I can do it again if I don't no big deal but it just helps me to stay focused and keep track of what I'm doing mm -hmm. I am and even in my knitting journal I put the ball band a sample of the yarn um, when I start the name of the sweater I didn't put the name of the designer I'll have to add that what needles I'm using I'm using my high high metal interchangeables US 6 4 millimeters so um, this is how detailed I can get this was um, down to the rows down tracking to the rows them. tracking the rows for my husband's sweater so that the sleeves were identical usually I do here's one sleeve here's another sleeve and I just taped, folded it up and taped it in here because I will be knitting him another flax I have all the yarn for it here's my flax light and here's a sheet of my sleeves and this one I just did one sleeve and I crossed off one direction and then when I did the other sleeve I cross off the other direction mm -hmm. um, it's just how I like to stay organized the paper clip down I will okay. say this can I say something else about this pattern absolutely Isabel Kramer writes in a different style her patterns mm -hmm. than Andrea Mowry Isabel Kramer likes to say conserve space and she is of the mindset that you come into it with a lot of knowledge right because she is very knowledgeable mm -hmm. where Andrea Mowry does a little more hand holding she and has a different style where it's very easy for a beginner beginner to knit all of her patterns you can learn a technique very easily because she has the tutorial links which I think Isabel Kramer does Isabel have Kramer tutorials. does too but her style of but writing is very short and to the point whereas Andrea Mowry takes um, like what Isabel Kramer would take one sentence to explain um, Andrew Andrew Mowry, Mowry takes about three sentences which can really help the comprehension right. of what you're supposed to do right so it's just different styles and getting used mm -hmm. to that um, I have knit an Isabel Kramer pattern before and I've mm -hmm. loved it you had to help me with it yeah, so but I was, you did it but I did it and I was proud with of myself one mistake um, so yeah. yeah it's just different styles and different writers different authors and you have that with books you know like Jody Picoult. Different formats. Different formats. Jody Picoult likes to tell the story from each character's perspective, which t drives me crazy. And others, you know, writers have different styles. So it's just what you're more comfortable and what you're used to. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's my blab on that. So I have. Do you have anything else? One more thing that I have been working on. And it is a garter stitch piece knit flat. And this will probably end up being a hot pot pad. I don't know if I'll felt it or not. It is 100% non superwash. Um, I was teaching a knitting class and I wanted to be able to knit along and explain myself visually because I'm a visual learner. And not knowing what style of learner I would be teaching, I wanted to make sure I could um, accommodate her learning style. Yeah, in whatever way I could. Yeah. So I'll definitely finish this shortly. I'm using Knit Picks Wool of the Andes in Rubius Heather. And you knit a beautiful cable sweater out of that. I did, yeah, which then didn't fit me because at some point along the way, Row Gauge didn't line up with the pattern and the saddle shoulders didn't fit me and they don't even fit you they don't I would have to get shoulder pads which is not no not gonna happen <laughs> no <laughs> um, it's more like just staying at home sweater yeah um, it's beautiful yeah and to frog it with those tight cables it would distort really distort the yarn distort the yarn so you know 
maybe we'll find a, another recipient who has, you know, shoulders who are up more structured. I have structured. I have sloppy. Sh not slouchy. 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 See, my mouth is not working tonight. Slouchy shoulders. Yeah. So that anyway. is all that I have that I have been stitching on. Yes, me too. Um, finished objects. So we will be stitched, all stitched together. Yep. So I am wearing my first finished object of the year, and it is my flax light. Mm -hmm. Now, if you can see the detail on the the garter stitch, the garter stitch, and I did not give this a wash. I steam blocked it, mm -hmm. which is the first time I've ever done that, and it turned out beautifully. I have the sleeves just right where I want them, mm -hmm. and you it know, is the not flax. too long flax it is light. A tin can knit. Sorry, I did it again. It's all right. I just realized you hadn't said what pattern it was. Sorry. Uh -huh. It's your project. Talk about it. <laughs> I steam blocked it because I didn't want it with it being super wash. I didn't want it to grow too much. First time working with this yarn, which is the Regia Premium mm -hmm. uh, Merino Yak. I didn't know how much it would grow, and I did not gauge swatch with this one. But I know I works. talked about swatching, but I didn't. I just jumped in and started you did, knitting. You did measure your gauge after you got about an inch past the, um, the neckline. The neckline, And it was perfect. It was spot mm -hmm. on. And I used a US 4, which is a 3.5 millimeter. Got that right this time. Um, and I made the size large. So yeah, what I did is I laid it on the ironing board and I flattened out the sleeve and then I just held the the iron on the steam setting about this far away from the fabric and just lightly steamed it and then just lightly smoothed it out um, and it worked great so yeah I'm excited to knit another one of these and um, I think Rachel took some pictures earlier today I did so maybe she can pop them in at the very end so you yeah. can see what it looks like full length but it's so comfy and so soft I absolutely love it yeah, it looks really great. Thank you. Okay. It just motivated me to knit another sweater. Yeah, and sweaters can be so rewarding. And after you hit a certain point, if it's not like a cabled sweater or something like that, it can be very meditative and simple. This one was that way. It was very potato chippy. It was very zen mm -hmm. and meditative because it was just knitting in the round, knitting in yeah. the round. Oh, and the girls got me... Uh, for Christmas, they got me the Chowgu Mini Twists in the larger sizes, so it starts with the US 4 and goes up to, I don't know what it is, but it's the blue pouch. Yeah. And I used that for the sleeves, and it worked so yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend those. Yeah, Love even, them. Even though I know knitting things because I'm a knitter, we still got gift receipt just in case you didn't like them or if they were the wrong tip length or anything like that. Well, they come with a two inch tip and a three inch tip, mm -hmm. and then they come with three cords. So I was able to just um, use one cord and then switch out the tip to the two inch mm -hmm. when I got down to the decreases and it got shorter and shorter, and it just it worked out beautifully. Yeah. It was perfect. Okay, so. And what do you have finished? I have one thing finished, and they are fingerless mitts. Well, this particular fingerless one gloves. has um, fingers, so. I, I would call them fingerless gloves, gloves. instead of mitts because yeah. they have the individual fingers. Yep, so. It is folded over. As I talked about, I did a folded brown. Um, cuff. cuff. A folded cuff. So it is attached and it's a double layer, but my sister likes to fold them up. They are for her and I had to request to get them back to show <laughs> them on here. But, they live in her truck. Yep, to keep her warm whenever the weather is unpredictable. So I used Forbidden Fiberco in the Ravenclaw colorway. It's a fingering weight base, but I'm not sure what her fingering weight base is called. I feel like it's pride, pride or fortitude. I can't remember yeah. which one. Um, I took really good notes. I'm really bad about writing my notes on the pattern, but then throwing the pattern away when I'm done because I print my patterns off. Um, so I took really good notes, wrote them down in a notebook. So if I need to make her another pair, 
I wrote down the things that she didn't necessarily like about them and how long I did the fingers. Mm -hmm. And so if I need to make another pair, I can make some small improvements, like not doing the wrist as long. And just doing... Because it is fairly long. Yeah. Um, and doing... A few more stitches on the thumb because where you join right in here um, for the thumb it was a little tight on her so I've always been intimidated to do fingerless gloves like that because I think it would be fiddly to pick up all those little stitches was it bad it wasn't too bad if you know how to pick up stitches and if you know how to do a backwards loop cast on you can do them and it was a simple knitted cast off. It wasn't a fancy loose cast off or anything. They were pretty so. easy and it was the leap pattern, which is a free pattern on mm -hmm. Ravelry. And I can't remember the designer's name, but it will be It'll um, be in the show down notes. below. Just maybe not linkable, but um, yeah, so you measure across your knuckles right here and that'll tell you what size to make. I made the size small. Um yeah, I think that's all I have to say. I did use a smaller needle for the ribbing and went up one needle size for the hand. They're really pretty. Yeah, I'm glad that she likes them and hopefully I'll make another pair. Um, yeah. yeah, we so. have that Brucity Yarns um, Hufflepuff colorway that would make really pretty it would fingerless pretty. gloves and I'm a Hufflepuff, hint hint. Yeah, I'll see you about <laughs> making you a pair. I would need the larger pair though. My hands okay. are bigger. So okay, so. I think that is all we have for stitched all stitched together and now mm -hmm. it's just general chatter. Yup. Okay, so um I have one thing that I got in the mail. Okay. Cool. I have been a very good girl and have not purchased a whole bunch of things. I have to say, having our yarn visible to look at every day has curbed my desire to add to it. Mm -hmm. um, this has made me feel very content being able to look at our stash yeah. and appreciate and grateful for what I have. So yeah. um, the reason I ordered this is Wool and Honey. Is that the company? Yes, it's a yarn store, I think, in Colorado. I thought it was in the... I'm East Coast. Might be East Coast. Don't don't pay attention to Rachel and geography, <laughs> um, but it's a yarn store. Anyway, before Christmas they were doing a $25 gift certificate um, giveaway and it was available to anyone who signed up for it, so I signed up for it and after the first of the year I went on their website to look and see what they had. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of their stuff was sold out but I was able to find this Earl Grey Fiber Company and it is on their chamomile sock two ply with gold stellina and the colorway is Rose Apotheca Apothecary and it is yeah. absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, it was $29.99, so the yarn only cost me $4.99, and then I think it was $8 shipping. So for under $14, I have this gorgeous um, skein, of yarn. skein of yarn from a company that I've never tried before, and I'm just waiting until it speaks to me and tells me what it wants to be because it is absolutely gorgeous. So mm -hmm. that is the only thing that I've gotten okay. in... Uh, owl post. Yep. So, um, yeah, so I don't have anything purchased or anything that came in the mail. No owl me. post? Nope. You also got a um, gift certificate or a Yeah, but voucher. I haven't um, gotten on to look yet. You've been so. really busy lately dyeing yarn. Yeah, and then in the evenings I'm so tired I barely knit. <laughs> I'll knit a little. I knit every day. Um, if I don't knit, it's because I'm sick, um, and thankfully yeah. that hasn't been the reason. It's